Welcome everyone. So today I think we're going to take a look at this Ghidorah 641, what they call the claw gripper. As you can see here, this is the package that it came in. So apparently this is made in Germany, according to the KC Tool website. I don't see any markings on the package or the tool itself that indicates that. I guess it's always possible that that information is incorrect, but as far as I know, that's the case. And you can see here it's laser etched with Ghidorah 641. Now the picture in the catalog for this, it looks a little bit different. The one in the catalog, this part up here is black. And I was kind of expecting this piece up here to be metal. And this right here is a plastic. So it looks to be a pretty tough plastic. I don't think it's any kind of cheap plastic because it doesn't really have much give to it. And you got this piece of rubber right here, which is kind of like a boot. So you can pull that down to kind of expose the other crimp there. And you can kind of turn this a little bit. I don't know if that's recommended, but that can rotate the tines on the end here. But you can see you can rotate a little bit to rotate the tines on the end. So this is really one of those tools that you rarely ever use, but when you really need it, it can be a lifesaver. It can save you a whole bunch of time and often there aren't any other tools that can replace it. You end up taking something all the way back apart to get something out. So this is actually a pretty expensive tool. It can be upwards, you know, close to ninety to a hundred dollars. And people are probably asking me, why didn't you buy one of those cheap ones? You get Harbor Freight for like ten bucks. So I was kind of asking myself that question. Now we had one of these at work not this model, of course, that we used quite, I wouldn't say quite often, but every once in a while we needed it. If somebody dropped something um, into a box or something that you couldn't access, it, I think the story I heard is that it broke. The tines bent or something like that on the end here, and they never got a replacement, so when we needed one again, we didn't have one. Just for my own curiosity, I went and bought one of those cheap Chinese Chinese made ones just to kind of see how it compares. I tried to find one that was as close to this model as I could. So I found this guy off Amazon. It's by General. Looks like that's the brand name. I think first thing I'll notice is that this one it doesn't have a uh, it just springs right back. Whereas this one right here you can bend it into pretty much any, it springs a little bit back, but you could do almost a full loop if you wanted to on here. So you can definitely get into U. It looks like if you try to go any further, it wants to spring back. So what I'm guessing is that inside of here is something similar to this. And then they encase it with this, this other material. So you can kind of bend some small loops into it and whatnot. So I I looked for one that had this, you know, this stay or bend property to it. Um, so I don't know if they if they even exist or not, because it looks like all the ones I've seen out there now are just like this. This type right here is really only useful if you're going in a straight line. If you have to go any, through, around any kind of obstruction, this thing is pretty worthless unless you're going through something that's a like a like a small opening, like a pipe or something. So I guess maybe this could be used to clean out pipes and drain pipes and whatnot because it springs. And the other thing I'll notice about this one, this one actually does have a light on the end, which seems to be a property a lot of these Chinese-made ones has. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up. I think some somebody gives out awards each year for the hardest to open package. All right, so I've lined up the handles at the other end there. It looks like the cheap one is about 45 millimeters or so longer than the uh, Ghidorah one. So that'd be about an inch and a half for, for you English guys. So we look at some of the basic specs here. This looks like the diameter of this tube right here is just over nine millimeters on the Ghidorah one. 
And on this guy, it's a little bit smaller, 8.5 millimeters. The other thing I noticed, the travel here on the cheap one is extremely small. So pretty much this little, this little collar is as far as you can go. And it looks like this unscrews. All right, so right in here is where the batteries go for that LED. And it looks like they're just using a screw to make contact. It's kind of strange. So they got an insulating sleeve on there. And then they're using the threads of this to uh, to form the circuit. So when you when you when that screw hits, that screw is connected through these. But it looks like this piece right here, this piece of hex, whatever, that's plastic. And then this is just a really really thin metal in here. So one thing you can't do with this one, you can't spin those tines around like you can the Ghidorah one. And like I said, the travel on this is very small. So you can only open it that much. So it looks like on the Ghidorah you have about 20 millimeters of travel. On this one you have about 15 millimeters of travel. So here's the Ghidorah, how wide you can open the Ghidorah one. And this one only has three tines. Here's how wide you can open the cheap one. Yeah, a huge difference. So I do kind of like the light there. I guess they could come in, in handy if you're really in a dark area. But that would imply that you actually have visual access to the area as well. So you're looking at these extreme close-ups here. That is just basically a, a plastic um, standoff there. Part of my concern with um, this being plastic on both of them is if you drop it, I've, I'm afraid that if you if this hits you know the concrete, it could snap one of these arms off. But you know it is what it is. I probably would have preferred that this be some kind of machined aluminum. So if we just sample a couple of things that you may need this for now, these are. These things are a lot larger than you typically would ever need this for. But so able to pick that, that nut up just fine. Here's a slightly smaller one. You got no problems there. And then here's a bolt. Try the same thing on the cheap one. But yeah, it'll still it'll still do the job. So here's a slightly more extreme example. If you drop these down somewhere. Now the problem with the four tines is you you really gotta have a thin spot to grab onto it. But once it once it grips, you know these these ones are they can lift quite a bit of weight, so they're not doing too bad. And I guess that's part of the issue with the three tines is you can lift more, you can open them wider, but you're not going to get as good of a grip. Still lifting it just fine. It's just not as secure with the three. So it's better for like rounder objects. So one of the problems with these spring-loaded ones, if you have an obstruction, it's very difficult to get that. Whereas this one, you get a much better chance of getting it. One thing I want to show you guys is the weight difference here. You got the cheap one, it's 105, 104 grams. The Ghidorah one, 162 grams. So I think a lot of that is the sleeve that's on there. Alrighty, just do a little bit of wrap up here. Just from that little bit of use, it kind of looks like those tines have bent a little bit on this cheap one. This tine right here. Got bent in a little bit somehow. So I guess you could bend these a little bit if they ever get messed up, but 
didn't see that same thing happen to these guys. So really this this Ghidorah one is made more specifically for people who might use this almost every day. You can just tell by the construction it's made to last a lot longer than this guy. Especially right up here, this piece, this plastic piece. I think that's going to be the first thing to go. Based on how much you can bend this, I do think it has the same type of spring design internal to this outer shell, which allows you to kind of spend it and stay in place. So it looks like you'll get a maximum of about, I don't know, maybe like 135 degrees. You definitely can't get a full 180 with this Ghidorah unit, but you could definitely go around a 90 degree angle bend without touching the end here whereas this one if you want if you want to do that you basically have to hold on to the end here which kind of defeats the purpose so one final thing i want to point out somebody mentioned that this Ghidorah tool looks ex almost exactly like the Hazet 1975 so this right here is from the Hazet catalog as you can see it looks pretty identical on the on the end here with the blue. Now the tip looks a little, a little bit different. The one they're showing here kind of has some crimped, crimped in edges where the jaws come out, whereas this one is not, not quite like that. So now this this Hazep one it comes from Taiwan, so pretty much we can guarantee that the at least this part of the tool probably came from Taiwan. Now. Now, I'm not sure if Ghidorah cr crimped this on, this piece on in Germany or whatnot. But it definitely at least appears different than the Hazet one, according to the catalog. And this Hazet one is, a, is actually a little bit more expensive than the Ghidorah one. So it's unlikely that Ghidorah is just gouging the price on this. They probably do actually cost quite a bit to make. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that look at the uh, very expensive pickup tool. And I'll catch you guys next time.